it's Karen with Karen Calls back with our next Java Basics video on the person class. And where we left off, we just had the the two different versions of the print string or to string method in our person constructor. And I don't like that it says first name, last name. It makes more sense to me to just remove those two labels and just leave it leave the first and and last name. As, as displaying together. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So we're going to go person, and then we're, instead of the first name, we're going to do a plus just for the, and that's just for the, the name that is already there. And because the first and last name are two separate labels, we do need to add a space inside the double quotes so that it doesn't just merge together in one long word. And that should change it to what we want. And let me just go ahead and copy and paste that into our our next line so that I don't have to re-edit here. Control V. Okay, perfect. And we don't actually need that last plus in quotation mark, so let's get rid of that. So I'm going to save it, and when I run it, you can see that it displays Mary Jones and John Jones, just what we wanted. Great. So now we're going to move on from playing with the two string, which is, I guess, somewhat interesting, but not the most interesting. And we're going to add some getters and setters to our class because this is where it gets a little more interesting. So underneath the methods notation there, I'm going to go ahead and do control shift S to bring up, and it didn't bring it up. Haha. -ha. Let me try it again. Okay. Let me just right click. <laughs> oh, alt shift S. That's why. So our shortcut was alt shift S and let's go to generate getters and setters. And so, in some applications, you're not going to want getters and setters for everything, but just for fun, we're going to go ahead and add them to everything. So then I can show you what it does. This is how you can change the values that appear in your program. And it puts the getters and setters underneath our two string. I don't want to. So I'm moving the two string below the getters and setters because I just like having the two string at the bottom. It's kind of a quirky thing, I guess, but okay. So I've got that all set up. So now that we have a getter and a setter, there's some things we can actually do with our people besides print out the two string. And let's just go ahead and show you what that is. So actually, let's get this out of the way and come up here. Okay. So now what I can do is I can say John, who is my person that I created above, and you can see I have this lovely get age option. Now we already know that John doesn't have an age because we didn't create him with one. So we're going to actually come down to the set age. And we want John to be 32. How about that? And so now when we well, it's going to get confused if I go ahead and print him now. So let me set his um, his status, but his is married bullion. Oh, in fact, actually, let me set it. Set is married. Sorry. Let me go down to where it is so that I can show you what I'm talking about. Set married is what it is. it's called. And so we're going to change that to false because he's single. Of course it already defaults to false, but we're, we're going to just do that just to specify it explicitly. And then we're going to go ahead and type in John and let's see if we get two different versions of John when we run our program. We don't. We just got John Jones twice. Okay. So we're going to follow up in the next video with why that happens and how to get John's age and marital status to appear. 
and we're going to do a little debugging to figure it out. So tune in next time. Thanks for watching.